All right, welcome back to the um, sermon recap. And we're going to actually be finished um, James chapter 4, verses 11 through 17. Which no way. We did. We finished it. And I'm surprised as well. I'm so proud of you. I know. It just took me, I don't know, like months to do. Uh-huh. Um, I feel like we should, instead of doing book series, it should be a chapter series. Yes, we could do that. Well, for me, it would work. Yeah. I, I don't know. We get like probably 12 in. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's right. I could go, yeah. That's, that's I think you're just trying to compete with John MacArthur. No, I don't know. I can do more stuff. More lessons. No, me. no, I don't think so. But I am contemplating going into Romans, and I don't know what that would look like for me. So, mm-hmm. oh wow, yeah, that, that, you're gonna die. I know, I'm going to die. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna die How eventually. Feel but... Thinking about starting a series that you're gonna die doing. Uh, it, I have not thought that much about it because I didn't really think well, I died to during think the about series. Your life and I know. Oh, there you go. Perfect segue. segue. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. So we touch base on your speech again, just to reiterate mm-hmm. that, and. Part of it is because it's a constant battle that we always have to go back to. Mm-hmm. I've been really impressed with the people who, who are listening and then trying to make adjustments in their own life to catch what's being said yeah. and the why behind what they're saying. Yeah, we talked to somebody yesterday and they were talking about how, how yes. like, there was, they, they had a conversation with somebody and at one point the conversation didn't go as well. Mm-hmm. And the next time they talked to them, they they really made an effort to try to like do what they're supposed to do in this area, and and the conversation went so much better. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it's funny our tongues they just it just slips out of us, mm-hmm. and if we're not aware, we're in trouble. I'm just realizing that that James is like this practical guide to the Christian life, right? Mm-hmm. And um, the tongue is a subject that he comes back to over and over again, even in a short book. Mm-hmm. And so is money. Those are right. the two things that's like. And this, I think the second part of this has something to do with money, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so we talked yesterday about the, the, the problem. And again, it's really important. The problem was not that these people were planning, mm-hmm. right? And sometimes we think, well, they're making these plans, and that's not the problem at all. Because right. in the Bible, we find that. Absolutely. Like, if we were to, to talk about somebody else, and we didn't like, frame it exactly how the Bible is here, but we said, hey, there's, there's these people, they own a business, and um, they're going to go on a trip, and their hope is that they can find something that they can purchase so that they can come back and sell it for more money. We'd be like, that is 100% how every business works, right? right. There's no they're being diligent. Business. They're being, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. They're, they're being frugal, smart yes. businessmen. Right. And so there's nothing in this that they do that is, on the surface, evil. Right. Right. So what's the problem? Exactly. Well, and, and you mentioned earlier, too, about the parable that Jesus gives of the man with his barn, and he's got increase, and he's looking for room to expand. It's the same story. If I was watching that man, and he was across the street from me, mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, he's doing well. Look, he's building another barn because he's got some stuff that he needs to store, and that, that makes sense. Yes, it makes sense, except... When we do that without, I think two things for James. The first was no thought about our future passing, that we're not going to live on this planet forever. Mm -hmm. And there was like no eternal perspective. And then no thought in our Father's plans Mm -hmm. for our life, that we're sort of just going ahead and doing our life um, regardless of any thought to God. Yeah, so. that's exactly what the guy, the guy with the big barns. Mm-hmm. He's like, you, you didn't consider God in any of this. You right. didn't consider the fact that you can die tomorrow in any of this. Exactly right. And and so the plans themselves aren't necessarily bad. It's just you've given no thought to God and no thought to your eternity. Right. We all think we're going to live forever. Mm-hmm. And the idea of my life being a vapor, um, when we stop to think about it, it's sobering yeah. that I'm not here very long. And, and, and you you don't know this as well as I know this because I'm 55. Yeah, you know this so much better. I do know it better because, <laughs> because you start thinking about, I'm not living another 55 years, mm-hmm. right? And so it is a vapor. You've only got one series left in you. I know, and that's about it. So I'm going to take advantage <laughs> of this right now. But but it, it does help us. to We've got to stop right now and then because we don't know what tomorrow holds. Mm-hmm. None of us know. Amen. And uh, that's why God gives us life in these little increments of 24 hours because we, we have no idea what's coming. Yeah. And we have to have thought about our future passing. We're all going to die someday. And we've got to be ready for that. I've talked to so many people about really facing death. Mm. And numbers of them had said, said to me, I'm just not ready. Mm. And it wasn't just not ready, because, but they felt like they didn't do enough yeah. for the cause of Christ. Yeah, that's it. Do you want to get to the end of your life and be like, I wish I had this time back that you have now? Right. And if the answer is no, you don't want to be there then what do you need to change now so that you're saying, okay, what is the Lord's will for me? Because I think if you get to the end of your life, you might not be able to say, I got to do everything yeah. for the Lord I <clears throat> wish I could have. Mm-hmm. But if you are attempting to live in the Lord's will daily right, and to say, okay, in my plans, in my business, in my work, in my whatever, am I doing what God wants me to do here? Then I think you do get to the end of your life and say, you know what? I, I tried to live in the Lord's will and exactly. there's a peace in that. 
there is a piece in that. And we've got to be conscientious. And the problem that many of us have, myself included, is that the preciousness of time, we squander it. Mm -hmm. And and if we were to think, like even right now, of areas in our life that we know it's just wasted time mm-hmm. and it's it means nothing. It's just vapid and empty. And we've got to we've got to just we got to make that right because before we know it, we wake up mm-hmm. and months or years pass and nothing was done of any eternal mm-hmm. value. Uh, I had notes again, and and I don't have them in front of me, but Tara sent me them. And um, the one thing I, I wrote down was that we are wasting our lives on distractions. Yes, that like. I think that's that's fully true that there are a million distractions out there and we are so busy, but we're busy in large part because we are so distracted. Yeah. Greg and I were having a conversation about like sports, like ESPN kind of stuff. And it's so ridiculous. There's all these talking heads mm-hmm. that talk about everything that doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And yet I'll watch it because it, <laughs> they're entertaining. It's like I it's can't a, get away from it. For me, it's like articles about the leaks. I figured that. I, I will read an article mm-hmm. about like Samsonov's injury and that he's actually not as bad as they mm. like yeah, that's good, good news. Yeah, good, good news. news. I was I was hoping that'd be the case. Right. Right. Doesn't matter, it's so stupid. Um so I yeah, I think that we, we weigh so much. And when we think about like what is what really matters and what the mm-hmm. Lord's will is, um one of the things that I've been like more conscientious of lately is the relationships in my life. Yeah. Um, the, the relationship with my wife, my kids, like trying to really intentionally build um, with friends. Like, mm-hmm. like that's a, with making time for those things. I think sometimes we like will come out to an event mm-hmm. and if that event isn't like captivating for us, like a movie would be, mm-hmm. then we're like, oh no, okay, I guess I don't need to do that or I'm not going to do that. And it's like, no, you don't realize that the thing, like a, a huge part about why you do church mm-hmm. or a ladies or a men's mm-hmm. or a growth group mm-hmm. or any of these things, which I'm speaking to the choir. I recognize that. Yeah. But a big part of that is because you build relationships right. and then like that might not feel like you accomplished a ton in those hour, mm-hmm. that hour that night. But over time and consistency right. and faithfulness, it, wonderful relationships are built. And Dan, you said about your family too. It's like just being aware that mm-hmm. this is right in front of me right now mm-hmm. and, and stop wishing this away. I mean, it's a gift and a blessing um, to be conscientious of that. So, yeah, totally agree with that. And then at the end, though, we said, okay, so um, the three takeaways. The one was be aware of your talk. And we've talked about that. It's so important because it is that the, your tongue reveals your heart. Number two was be active in our time. Mm-hmm. Right? Don't waste it. Um, and we find lots of ways to waste it. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe we ought to think about areas that we could cut back on and take that time and really make it valuable in our walk with God and our relationships with others, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then, and then finally, be attuned um, to God's will. Uh, so there's a verse in uh, it's Psalm 32. I think it's eight or nine, but but it's God speaking. It says, "I will teach you and instruct you in the way you should go. Um, I will guide you with my eyes." Don't be like the horse or the mule. Mm -hmm. And I think when we can wake up every morning and say, Lord, okay, this life is yours. This vapor that I have for a little time is yours to control. Guide me with your eye. Watch Mm -hmm. over me. Guide my steps, my starts, Mm -hmm. um, all of that so that I can live this day in a way that pleases you. It's like, Lord, I do want your will in my speech, in my actions, in my thoughts, in my behavior. I want you when I pillow my head at night to be pleased with how I've lived this day. That's a big deal. I remember, and I don't do this all the time now, but I remember as a teenager, one of the things that I had decided I would do is at the end of the day, I would make sure I confess the sin Mm -hmm. of the day, and then I would try to pillow my head and say, like, everything's good between the Lord and I. Amen. There's, yeah. So, yeah, that'd be a good good idea. That's beauty. Absolutely. We should start that. Yeah, I know. I know. (laughs) But it should be our mind frame. And and that's what James is trying to uh, get us to think about. Like, it's not that we make plans. It's mm-hmm. like we make plans with ever, without ever considering the God of heaven and what he has for our lives. And when we live like that, the Christian life is exciting. Mm-hmm. I don't know what he's bringing before me today. I don't know what kind of conversation I'm going to have. Mm-hmm. I don't know what kind of just random things that will happen that God is at work. And if I can recognize that, then there is never this mundane. It's like this is glorious. And Even the mundane. If you're li- Yeah. And if you're living in the Lord's will, trying to do the Lord's will, then, then those little things... That, that those opportunities that you might miss mm-hmm. are there, and there you take them. And That's right. It's, and then you pillow your head at night thinking, Lord, you brought this into my life, mm-hmm. and by the best of my ability with your spirit and your mind, I try to do these things to please you, and it makes the Christian life mm-hmm. glorious. Mm-hmm. One of the things I noticed from verse 16 um, was just that 
the reason that we don't do these things is because of our arrogance. Arrogance. Is it like this idea of like, it, no, it is about me and I'm going to do my own thing and I'm not going to worry about the Lord's will. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take care of this myself. There might even be some like feeling of like um, independence that is, that is like we think it's healthy. Right. Like I don't need to rely on mm-hmm. God for all these things or whatever. But I, I think that, that recognizing that is like pride mm-hmm. is probably a good start. And then, and then verse 17 says, therefore to him who knows to do good and doesn't, doesn't do it to him it is sin. I thought there is some knowledge that these people have about mm-hmm. what they're supposed to be doing that they're disregarding. Right. And so even though we look at it and we don't see a clear, obvious sin, what James is saying is if you know that you're supposed to be living in the Lord's will and you're mm-hmm. not, even if nobody else knows that you're sinning, you right. are. You are. That's right. And we're really prone to make excuses for why it's not. But that comes back to our arrogance and our own desires and our own will and our own idols that we set up. And James is trying to knock those down in our lives mm-hmm. for God's glory, mm-hmm. which is a good thing. It is. The last thing, just the mm-hmm. tomorrow part. Yes. I think, like, I just want to put a plug out there for our parents and teens that, like, it, we should be, and for all of us, though, we should be thinking, like, okay, God, my future is actually in your hands. Mm-hmm. And so as you think about making plans in school and all those things, like the Lord might lead you into an engineering or whatever program. Right. But make sure that you've given that future to God. Amen. That it is in his hands. And so he gets to decide what you're going to do. And if, if it is that thing, then great. You do that for his glory. Amen. You do it all for his glory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Good word. All right, well, with that said, we hope you enjoy the study. Pastor Daniel, you'll close us in prayer. It'll yeah. be awesome. Let's pray. Thank you. Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God of our mm. um, now, of eternity, and of our tomorrows, and that we can rely on you. That, that yeah. As we think about um, putting today in your hands and tomorrow in your hands, um, we're, we're giving it over to our loving Father, mm-hmm. that there is a, a peace that comes with knowing that um, Whatever happens, if we are trying to live in your your will, then it's something you've brought mm-hmm. and that you have a plan for. And Lord, sometimes we make a mess of our own lives. Help mm-hmm. us to not do that. I pray that, that we would um, just seek to live in a way that, that is honoring to you in whatever profession you've put us in, mm-hmm. in whatever family situation we're in. Um, Lord, I, I pray that we would be looking for ways to please you. Yeah. And we thank you for this, this reminder um, that our life is short, mm. that we've got one brief life to live here and eternity to look forward to. And I pray that we would be conscientious of living um, this life uh, in a way that matters for eternity. Yeah. And thank you, Lord. We love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Enjoy the study. Mm-hmm.